A gaming hero is only ever as good as their villain, but unlike movies or television, it can be quite difficult for developers to create antagonists who remain interesting, compelling, and most importantly threatening for a whole game. Because they have to maintain their threat levels for anywhere between 2 to 200 hours, big bads often take a back seat, only showing up for pivotal moments at the beginning and end while spending much of the game as a distant, abstract threat. However, some games and franchises have seemingly perfected the art of crafting deliciously evil baddies that you just love to hate, effortlessly building up the anticipation to the moment you finally get off the back foot and sink a hatchet straight into their skull. Barking a genuine rivalry with the player, every time these villains showed up you knew they were going to ruin your day, no doubt resulting in someone losing their life, their limbs, or maybe even their pride in the process. And look, I'm not advocating violence, but when you finally caught up to these villains, a brutal execution was more than deserved. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 evil video game villains you couldn't wait to kill. Boilers ahead. Number 10. Jack. Resident Evil 7. Bringing the franchise back from the brink of irrelevancy, Resident Evil 7's compelling cast of villains made it one of the most memorable entries in the entire series, moving away from the campy baddies and instead unleashing a twisted, backwards family of horrific creatures to terrorise the player with. Each member of this sick troop was terrifyingly brought to life, with the spider-like Marguerite and the Saw-inspired Lucas each reflecting a different decade of horror influences. But it was Head Honcho Jack who was by far the sequel's fiercest antagonist. Partly because he's the first major enemy you come across in the game, Jack's constant, seemingly omnipotent presence makes the early, horrific hours absolutely nerve-wracking. Incessantly chasing you through the Baker Mansion, you can technically put the psychopath down with a whole load of bullets to the brain, but he always returns to pick up the chase a few moments later. He's a terrifying enemy to keep running into, but it's the way the title constantly brings him back in new, gruesome ways after you've seemingly already killed him, even more dangerous than before, which truly cements your rivalry with him. Number 9. Wraith, Uncharted 4. Unlike other villains on this list, Wraith doesn't look like much at first glance. He's not the strongest, most intimidating, or even the most intelligent antagonist the Uncharted franchise has ever seen. But boy is he the one you hate the most. Instead of being a moustache twirling cartoon villain, Wraith is so evil because of how human and relatable he is. The polar opposite to Nathan Drake, the character already has everything he could possibly need near endless funds, a high octane life, and the ability to do pretty much anything and everything he wants. The thing is though, his powerful life is one he inherited rather than earned, something Rafe is very aware of. Consequently, he spends the entirety of Uncharted 4 backstabbing friends, killing in cold blood, and constantly dicking over the player in an attempt to be the one to steal Avery's treasure, creating a personal rivalry with Drake that spans decades and costs him millions of dollars. He's more of an entitled smarmy git than a tyrant with plans of world domination, but that somehow only makes you want to knock his lights out even more. Number 8. Vars. Far Cry 3. One of the most iconic villains of the last generation, Far Cry 3's Vars completely transformed an otherwise forgettable narrative into something truly memorable. The leader of a violent band of pirates, the character had a hand in everything from drug smuggling to human trafficking, but there was one villainous act he was particularly fond of, and that was beating the absolute living piss out the player. Unlike a lot of video game baddies who rarely interact directly with the player, Bass is present throughout most of Far Cry 3, showing up regularly to terrorise you. Hell, the guy captures you over three times throughout the sequel, at one point even tying some rocks to your feet and shoving you into a pit of deep water. Although you manage to escape every time, these powerless moments maintain Vass as a genuine threat, and his constant monologuing allows you first-hand experience of just how much of a bastard he can really be. Brilliantly brought to life by the always excellent Michael Mando, Vars feels like he's only ever one step away from having a total psychotic breakdown. But it's that unpredictability which makes him so compelling, and it's also why the game suffers so much when he's taken out of the action for the final third. Number 7. The Devil. Cuphead. Don't let its cheery cartoon visual design fool you. Playing through Cuphead is serious business. The first level alone is enough to send even the most seasoned gamer into a rage-induced frenzy, with every death at the hands of each new boss from there on out feeling like a personal insult. You come to hate every goddamn one of them, recoiling in horror at every little mannerism and smoke smile they do, while absolutely relishing every single damage animation you inflict. Seriously, 
you'll shock yourself with how much hate you can feel towards a cartoon potato. Of course, it's the final boss, the devil, who's by far the most menacing foe to tackle in Cuphead. With the whole game kicking off because the lovable duo of Cuppy and Mugman sold their souls to Satan after losing big in the casino, the big bad's present is always felt in the background as you slog through his underlings. Likewise, by the time you do come face to face with the villain, there's a good chance you'll be completely exhausted from throwing yourself at a brick wall over and over again, knowing you've still got the biggest test to overcome. Put simply, the devil is an outright dick to beat, and more than lives up to his hellish title. Screw him to hell. Number 6. Dowd. Dishonored. The assassin who frames main character Corvo for murder at the start of the original Dishonored, not much is revealed about Dowd over the course of the first game, other than that he's a ruthless, murderous little However, while his presence puts the title's plot into motion and makes him a decent enough antagonist, he really does come into his own across the title's DLC, putting you back in the pursuit and eventually in control of the callous killer. The DLC acts as a semi-redemptive arc for the character, showing that while his methods were brutal, there was a reason for his actions, even if his attempts at doing good were only needed in the first place because of his prior villainous deeds. Regardless of his intentions though, he's eventually cornered by the player, and in a moment which is strangely sympathetic Pathetic, snaps out of his relentless antagonism and begs for mercy. After that, it's up to the player to act as judge, jury, and executioner in deciding his sentence. Also, it helps that he's voiced by Michael Madsen, who, even when he's phoning it in, has a terrifying erratic aura you just can't help but love to hate. Number 5. Stefano the Evil Within 2. Originally a war photographer who got far too obsessed with his work, by the time Stefano harnesses the power of the stem in The Evil Within 2, he's orchestrating and executing his own horrific photos. Being able to capture the moment of death in a sort of slow-mo time war, the villain's self-proclaimed masterpieces are beautifully gruesome, increasing in brutality with every new showpiece. The antagonist is more than just a visual gimmick though, as not only is it exciting and terrifying to follow his blood-soaked path of destruction, but you're also given an emotionally engaging reason to track him down, as he's kidnapped main character Sebastian's daughter. It also helps that a vicious monster, taking the form of a grotesque film camera, hunts you down every time you get close to derailing his plans, ensuring that Stefano has the bite to back up his bark. Another villain tragically takes Stefano's place halfway through the sequel, but he's utterly one note in comparison to just how compelling, creative, and downright menacing this crazed photographer is during the title's opening hours. Number 4. Sal Marcano, Mafia 3 as Lincoln Clare, you spend the opening hours of Mafia 3 building up something of a repertoire with crime boss Sal Marcano, to the point where Clare's downtrodden family begins to thrive thanks to his work with the shady gangster. Of course, this being a Mafia game, or you know, literally any gangster story ever, there's always a betrayal lurking around the corner, and Sal snuffs out Lincoln and his entire family in one of the game's most effective and disturbing scenes. Scored to the stones is painted black, the moment Sal begins his betrayal is unrelentingly brutal, and watching this villain you've actually grown to like utterly and remorselessly tear down everything you've worked towards is genuinely heartbreaking. Unfortunately, your rivalry with him never really hits the emotional peak of this introductory onslaught of evil, but every time the title returns to him after one of his rackets is put out of business, it feels like a satisfying step towards true justice. The final showdown with him is enjoyably subversive too, lacking a flashy final fight and opting instead to pit Lincoln against Sal in a battle of the wits, with the latter laying his soul bare before the player plunges a knife into his chest. It doesn't quite make up for what he did though, and the worst part is just how empty you feel after you finally get your own back. Number 3. The Joker, Batman, Arkham Knight Despite having no physical presence to speak of, the Joker manages to be deadlier than ever in Rocksteady's Arkham Knight. Killed off at the end of City, the Clown Prince of Crime is alive and kicking as part of Bruce Wayne's subconscious in this third game, showing up to taunt Batman, sabotage his attempts at heroics, and sing him sweet lullabies before eventually attempting to take him over from the inside. Your mental roommate constantly invades your privacy, playing on your greatest fears and berating you for failing to save closed allies. Although he doesn't have any elaborate traps set up to hurt you in the real world, the creeping encroachment on Batman's psyche is the most insidiously evil thing the character does in the whole trilogy, made even worse by the fact that there's no easy way to just claw him out. Likewise, in the best twist in the series, the finale changes perspectives entirely towards the end, having you play as the Joker as he succumbs to his own fear of being forgotten about. It's a surprisingly tragic and touching moment, as the supervillain's legacy crumbles into nothing and he's haunted by the spectre of Batman. Still, it's satisfying to actually 
actually beat him for once, in a way that doesn't have any strings attached. Number 2. Comstock, Bioshock Infinite a big ol' racist who created a white nationalist heaven in the sky, locked his own daughter that he stole from another reality in a tower guarded by a terrifying mechanical protector, and had the ultimate goal of raining down terror on America from the safety of his floating city, Comstock is one of the best and most ambitiously evil gaming villains ever. The self-proclaimed prophet hunts you down throughout the entirety of Bioshock Infinite, all the while spewing his religious rhetoric and positioning himself as a godlike figure. His constant lectures alone are enough to make you hate him, but seeing the oppression and the fear the villain actively cultivates across every inch of the title's world ensures that each player will be begging for his head by the end of the game. This rivalry gets even more heated when you find out that Comstock is just another version of main character Booker, meaning you're essentially on a quest to kill an evil dictator you are only a few bad choices away from becoming yourself. Number 1. Frau Engel Wolfenstein 2 Although she was a main villain in the first game, the Nazi queen bitch Frau Engel really becomes a force to be reckoned with in Bethesda's sequel. Taking such glee in chasing down any of the Third Reich's detractors, the sadistic general constantly flaunts her power, ruthlessly second-guessing your every single move. Despite her timid and mangled frame, which is a result of being attacked by a mech in the original title, Engel is genuinely terrifying. Hell, within the first half an hour alone she's literally decapitating your closest allies and taunting you by making you kiss their detached heads for Christ's sake. Her actions only escalate from there too, and whether she's murdering your friends right in front of you and sticking the smoking barrel of the gun into your mouth or executing you on national television, the game always finds a way to keep you completely and irrevocably despising its main villain. Unlike some of the entries on this list, your clashes with Engel feel deeply personal and insurmountable, which only makes those small victories and the eventual confrontation all the more satisfying. So that's our list. If there are any villains that ignited your thirst for brutality more than these monsters, then let me know in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for even more lists like this every single day. I've been Josh, and I'll see you soon. Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video, aren't you a star? Don't forget to subscribe below, and also, the people who made this video, they're right here, so go and follow them and give them some love. If you want to see more content, there's probably some stuff flowing up above my head, why not check it out? It could be fun. I'm not your dad.